Hello everyone, today I'm bringing you another video looking at a recreation of the kit of a British soldier serving during the Cold War, specifically the 1970s in this instance. And what we're having a look at here is a recreation of troop trials of the 1975 pattern equipment. Now this is a set of trials equipment proposed for introduction but never actually introduced on a wide scale, but certainly trialled. It's not a very good design as has been discussed previously on the channel for various reasons, uh, but having picked up the rucksack that goes with the basic set of equipment, I thought it would be worth putting the kit together and wearing it to show what it looks like when it's worn. Uh, it's an odd set of equipment, not a very good design as said. We'll see that as we have a look at this in a bit more detail now. Looking at an overview of the recreation here, you can see that the basic uniform is essentially the standard issue uniform for the British Army at the time. We have the trial 1975 pattern equipment, which gives quite a different look than the standard 1958 pattern equipment that would be seen at the time. The first thing I'll mention here is the weapon carried, and this is of course the self-loading rifle, the L1A1. This is the standard rifle of the British infantryman at the time. You can see here this particular example has a mixture of wood and plastic furniture, which is not unusual to see in the early to mid-1970s and even through into the very early 1980s. Starting at the top, we'll have a look at the helmet here, and this is of course the British Mark IV steel helmet. This has been camouflaged with a piece of DPM cloth over the top, and you have a net and then scrim applied as well over the top of that. You can see this is worn with a chin cup, which is an occasional modification by individual soldiers, and this of course keeps the chin strap to the point of the chin. Just adds a little bit of comfort when wearing the helmet. The basic uniform consists of the 1968 pattern combat uniform, and this is of course the British Army's first standard issue DPM combat uniform, taking over from the limited issue of the 1960 pattern made in DPM cloth, which had appeared in the early 1970s. The 1968 pattern by the mid-1970s was on wide scale issue, and the majority of British troops by that point were wearing a camouflage combat uniform. Talking more about the equipment here, the 1975 pattern doesn't really have a belt per se. It has a strap at the front, a waist strap at the front, which attaches onto the side pouches. And you can see that here. It has an interesting development of the US Davis buckle. And it has a T piece that slots into the other half of the buckle, making for a quick release, as you can see here. The strap itself is very similar to seatbelt material. It's a nylon strap, as you can see, and this can be adjusted in. The piece into which the T piece of the buckle slots is hinged from this, and you can see that design here with the buckle on the waist strap. To each side, you have an individual pocket which allows you to carry a single SLR magazine, a 20 round SLR magazine. Looking at the left hip here, we can see one of the two side pouches. Now these are actually permanently joined to the small pocket at the front, carrying a single magazine. And the other side is basically a mirror image, but for the fact that you have a bayonet attachment point, you have loops on the side of this pouch, on the left hand pouch, to allow for the carriage of a bayonet, similar to the 1958 pattern equipment. This pouch will contain a single 1958 pattern water bottle with its cup, or several magazines stacked together. So designed with that in mind, and you can see it closes with a modified version of the fasteners used on US M1967 and then later Alice equipment. These are stitched in place rather than being attached with plastic rivets, as you can see here. Round to the rear of the belt kit, for want of a better word, there is a rear pouch, and this is large enough to contain a single 24-hour ration pack, along with various other items, perhaps spare socks, uh, soldier's wash kit, personal items of that nature. And this again forms part of the equipment. It doesn't sit on a belt. It has two straps on each side, attaching it to the front and side pouches, which can be adjusted in. It does mean that the actual, again, belt kit, for want of a better word, is quite comfortable to wear when you're not wearing the rucksack, which is what we're going to look at next. Looking at the rucksack here, it has several interesting features. The main compartment and the front compartment, or rear compartment as you can see here, both close with tapes which tie through loops, which gives it a large range of adjustment. It's a very simple way of closing these two compartments. There is also a strap on the front, which means that an entrenching tool can be carried down the back of this. It's a small strap with a cam buckle, which you can see in the centre of the image here. And the rucksack is made of a rubberized nylon material, again with nylon straps in common with the rest of the equipment. And looking at the side profile here, you can see the side pouch, which closes with the same fastener as we saw used elsewhere on the equipment. And these are roughly the same size as the side pouches found on the belt kit. One issue with this rucksack, which you can see here, is that when it's carried with the rest of the 1975 pattern equipment, it has to be carried very high on the shoulders and is actually rather uncomfortable from that point of view. It doesn't interface well 
with the rest of the equipment and that is a real problem with this design is it's not very ergonomic when you want to carry the rucksack in addition to the rest of the equipment. The final thing to look at here is footwear and we have here a standard pair of DMS ankle boots, the standard footwear for the British Army at the time, worn with ankle putties as you can see again pretty standard for the time. Looking again at an overview of the recreation here would highlight the quite tall rear pouch on the back of the 1975 pattern equipment which as mentioned does not interface well with the rucksack and that is a problem with the design. The rucksack is carried quite high up the back here. The shoulder straps have been tightened right in and even then it's not a comfortable combination really. It wouldn't be for any length of time. And another issue with this is that the, the frame for the rucksack is shallower than that eventually adopted for the GS rucksack and this does cause problems. It's not very comfortable to carry at all. So that's a look at the 1975 pattern equipment as it would have appeared in troop trials in the 1970s. This is not typical equipment for the 1970s. I need to stress that here. This is a trial set of equipment. So there it is, the 1975 pattern equipment often referred to as 1972 pattern by collectors but the official documentation I've seen refers to this as 1975 pattern, so that's the term I use. As I say, quite an interesting set of equipment, but not particularly practical, but nevertheless part of the story of British equipment design and development during the course of the Cold War. So hopefully it's been of interest having a look at this. If you have found it interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you've clicked the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's really greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.